the former head of the British Army, stepped down from the post in August 2009 after he criticised the UK's handling of the war in Afghanistan. At the time, Dannett had called for then Prime Minister Gordon Brown to send more troops to the country. His candor broke ranks with colleagues who traditionally make views known to politicians only in private. Almost two years on, the UK mission in Afghanistan continues, but the armed forces are now having content to contend with a new theatre of war, Libya, while juggling spending cuts at the same time. Last month, Dannett said the Conservative government should reconsider its defence cuts in light of the Middle East unrest. And Lord Dannett now joins me now live in the studio. Good morning. Thank you Good for morning. joining us. Would you deem the mission in Libya a success so far? Yes, it's a success so far, but it's very much work in progress. And I think it'll be an interesting test to see what can be achieved just from the air. And it's been very interesting to watch overnight, over the last couple of days, how Gaddafi's um, army and military have adapted to the circumstances they find themselves in. They're not using their heavy weapons, they're not using their tanks, they're moving around in civilian vehicles. They're being quite clever. Does that mean that you're implying we need to go in, NATO needs to go in on the ground? Is that the next step? I think we're very keen not to do that. I think if there's a lesson or two to be learnt from Iraq and Afghanistan, and that is that we put our boots on the ground, particularly in Muslim countries who, who may not universally welcome our presence there, I think we put our boots on the ground quite lightly. So I think what we're doing is quite sensible to be supporting from the air. But there are other things that need to be considered. For example, considering arming the opposition. It's a moot point. It's hanging out there. But there's some pretty tricky military hardware out there which, which would need to be demonstrated to the opposition. I mean, what would, how would this process go about itself? Well, I agree. I mean, it isn't, it isn't a straightforward matter, and many modern weapons are pretty complicated. That said, quite a number of modern weapons are not that complicated. And if there was a mind to do it, and there currently isn't, it would be perfectly possible to produce anti-tank weapons, heavy machine guns, relatively straightforward weapons that the opposition fighters could be trained in, off-site probably, maybe away from the country, or indeed other Muslim Arab countries in the region could take on that training function. I think the thing is, if we really want to do this and make a success of it, You've got to go from strategic objective to end state and have a plan. We've got half a plan at the present moment. What, is that the big danger? I mean, the criticism has been of the government that there's no exit strategy. We went in, some saying nobly, but we went in without an exit strategy. Could that cost us dear in the end? Are we going to be dragged in to a lengthy conflict here? I don't think we'll be dragged into a lengthy conflict. And I think implied in your question is, are we likely to wind up with boots on the ground? I'm sure the answer is no to that. But equally, it's not in anyone's interest to see us there for an extended length of time. So I think everything possible must be done to bring this to a conclusion. Now, the difficulty is, is the UN Security Council Resolution 1973 talks about the focus of the mission being to protect civilians. That's very good and that's very important. But of course, what you know and I know, and the politicians know but can't say it, is that really success equates to when Gaddafi has gone and another better regime is put in place. That's what they can't say. That's what they've got to do. Can you foresee a time in the near future where Gaddafi will go? Because as you say, his forces are wisening up, aren't they? Yes, if they're wisening up, then, then the opposition forces have got to wise up. I think the air forces have got to wise up as well. And you get back to issues like possibly considering arming the rebels themselves. Is that the only option? Arming it's, the it's, not, it's not the only option, but of course there's quite a number of things running at the present moment. There is the threat of the International Criminal Court um, bearing down on Gaddafi himself. There's the freezing of his assets around the world. There are a lot of pressures building up on him. And I think the key thing here really is not so much what he's thinking, but his, his inner group of people, his inner supporters, and maybe the next ring of supporters as well. Are they thinking to themselves, hang on, the whole world is against us here. Do we really want to go on supporting this chap, or is there a better way? Where do my interests really lie? That's where we've got to be working on people. Of course, it all comes as the government this week announced uh, details of the defence cuts, where they will land within the armed forces. Terrible timing? Well, it's unfortunate. Of course, the... Reductions in the armed forces announced this week by the Army and the Navy are the inevitable consequence of the decisions taken last autumn. Now, you can make a very good argument to say that those decisions taken last autumn were perfectly reasonable in the context of the national financial meltdown that we find ourselves in. But the world has moved on. Uh, we often say in the military, um, have we reached a question four moment? What's that? Um, we ask ourselves a number of questions when we analyse a mission, one of which is, 
has the situation changed since my boss gave you my orders? Well, I think you could say, looking at North Africa and the Middle East, the situation has changed. Perhaps we should be reviewing things again. Will we review things? Are you getting well, any intonation from the government that things could be reviewed in light well, of events in Libya and the Middle East? Well, in fairness to this coalition government, one thing they did say at the time that they published their review last autumn is that they will do this regularly, at least once every parliament, probably once every four or five years. So in a sense, the next review has already begun, and I think that's to be welcomed. I think the other issue is that we all know that the world is not becoming a safer mm -hmm. and more certain place and that probably our defence spending has got to go up at some point in the medium term. What we need to see is a commitment from the Prime Minister and the Chancellor as to what the funding for defence will be in 2014 in the next period and beyond so the planners can plan against that. That's how, how stretched are we, final question, right now? You know, we have our forces in a number of key places worldwide. Afghanistan could be Libya. I mean, it could mm. expand. How stretched are the forces becoming right now? We're stretched. We're busy. We're running hot. We've been doing that for some time. I would say running hot is becoming running very hot at the present moment. Thank you very much for joining us today, Lord Richard Dammit there, former head of the, the UK Army.